You good? All right, guys, thank you so much for coming out today. We have uh, three cases that we're actually going to update you on. Uh, the first one, I know Sebastian Daly's here, wanted to do uh, a lot of questions about over the weekend, a lot of patrol cars in the area of the hospital. So I want to give you an update on a story. Uh, overnight Friday into Saturday morning, we had an incident where there was a young lady who was in the hospital in the ICU. Uh, she's there being treated. The hospital in Sebastian is taking care of her. Uh, her boyfriend, uh, you know, whatever the relationship is, shows up. Uh, this is actually him. His name is uh, Forrest Smith. And uh, Forrest shows up at the hospital with basically his own pharmacy. Uh, he's there. She's in the hospital being taken care of in ICU. And Forrest decides to bring his little pharmacy with him. So he's got uh, an ounce of cocaine. He's got a variety of different prescription medications, some of which he has a prescription for, some of which he doesn't. Uh, and ultimately, while he's there, uh, she begins to die. She's dying. She's what they call coding, right? Uh, so the nursing staff tries to get in the room. He's kind of passed out. They get in there. They start bringing her back to life, at which point he begins to die. He's dying of a drug overdose as well. So we now have two people, one of which was there for medical treatment. This guy brought his own pharmacy with him, gave her drugs while he was there, admittedly gave her drugs, none of which the doctors are part of, none of this. He brings in these medications. Uh, the hospital ultimately brought them both back to life. Uh, she is still in the hospital being treated. And uh, our friend here, Forrest Smith, uh, is over at our jail, charged with delivery of a controlled substance. And we are currently working, our detectives are working uh, with the state attorney's office to uh, also charge him with possession of those drugs as well. Uh, so just a crazy case that this guy shows up over the weekend at the hospital while his, uh, his friend, his, his female companion is in the hospital getting treatment for her issues and thinks that it's a good idea to be uh, giving his own medication. So we really should charge him uh, with practicing a medicine without a, without a license, right? I mean, this guy is completely out of control thinking that he knows more than the doctors. And uh, ultimately with what he gave them, the two of them, could have died. You know, fortunately, they were in the hospital um, and they they were alive. Second case that I want to talk to you about. Uh, this is uh, James O'Neill. Mr. O'Neill uh, has a four-year-old autistic, uh, nonverbal grandson. As a father of an autistic child, I know what it's like. I know it's very challenging. Over the weekend, our agency had our fifth documented encounter with this nonverbal child, where the child was actually at a convenience store, away from the house. The grandfather's supposed to be watching him. He's not watching him. Four other times we had documented this. We had had conversations with the family, with the mom, with the grandfather. When you leave him in the grandfather's custody, it's not working. This is not good. He walks away, he gets away from him. The grandfather doesn't pay, pay close enough attention. We talked to him about our programs that we have from Project Lifesaver uh, to our circle program where we take folks with special needs and offer them a bracelet so that we know who they are. Our deputies are so familiar with this young child that when they showed up at the convenience store, they knew immediately who the child was, fortunately, and where he belonged to, took him back to the house, and ultimately, uh, Mr. O'Neill was charged uh, with neglect of a child. We also called in DCF in the case. And so uh, we want to bring this to your attention. It's a good reminder that we have resources available. If you have someone in your life who has special needs or who is wandering, uh, if they're elderly, if they have, uh, you know, uh, dementia, Project Lifesaver is available. A lot of our valuable resources get tied up on cases just like this. And if folks would just take the steps to do these additional things, it could really save us a lot of valuable time. And the last case before I take your questions is back in 2017, our agency made an arrest on a stabbing. It was a murder. Davalon Brinson was the uh, arrested person in that case. Over uh, the course of last week, we had a murder trial at our courthouse, and Davalon Brinson was convicted of first-degree murder. So for those of you who covered that case back in 2017, we're happy to report that the jury returned a guilty, a, a guilty verdict uh, and that our team did an amazing job in that trial. We're very proud of all of them uh, and that he will be going off to prison for a very long time once he gets through sentencing. So with that, I'll take questions on either one of these cases or that, uh, that other one. Andy? Uh, he is from Jacksonville. 
uh, yeah, he, he listed his address as Jacksonville. Not sure where the female is from. Um, she's still in the hospital, though, being treated. Uh, just a crazy situation that he thought he could. And it, not only that, he goes in at 2.30 in the morning. Now, he had been in and out of the hospital. Uh, but you know the hospital has regulations. You don't come and go at that time in the morning. He goes in. He gives her medicine, gives her some of these prescription pills. He had almost an ounce of cocaine on him. So, I mean, this guy is just completely out of control, thinking he knows more than the medical staff. And for them to take so much that both of them essentially die in the hospital and get brought back to life, just a, a crazy situation. You know how much, um, let's clip this real quick. Sure. Uh, thanks. Mm -hmm. What's the question? Oh, I was going to say, you know how much so essentially, once we uh, got on scene, uh, we worked with the nursing staff to go through and do an additional uh, toxicology on the blood and to look into to that. Um, based on the secondary results, we do believe um, that he gave her one of the pills uh, that ultimately worked against what the hospital was doing for her, which is what caused her to essentially die right there where they brought her back to life. Um, but we're going to continue to work on that. I can't say for sure, you know, what exact combination of those drugs that he gave because he had so many different things with him. And so it's going to take our team doing their investigation to ultimately figure that out. You know, he did admit that he brought those drugs when he fell out. You know, they started uh, getting him ready for treatment as well. And that's when he discovered all these things. And so, um, you know, we, we can't say for sure what all he gave her at this point, but it was enough to, to kill both of them. Essentially, they were brought back to life. Uh, I don't have the list. He, he did have cocaine. He had a medical marijuana card. Um, he definitely had some prescription medications with him, and it was a, a several prescription medications. And uh, ultimately, one of those is, is definitely what we know that he gave her for sure. So essentially, this is, we don't know if this is a deal yet, but this is somebody who had drugs and decided I mean, to give drugs to an addict that was trying to recover. So she's in there for other issues, not related to this. She's in intensive care, um, you know, whether or not she's in pain, uh, the hospital has the right medications for that kind of stuff. Uh, for him to be walking around with this pharmacy with a, an ounce of cocaine, uh, yeah, that's dealer quantity. That's not something that you normally walk into a hospital with. Um, that's not user quantity by any stretch of the imagination. Now, if she's in intensive care and passes away from these complications, are you going to pay for more drugs? So our team has been doing that, and that's another great point with this, Dylan. Thank you for bringing that up. When our teams have overdose, death, overdose deaths, they go directly into the investigation mode. Where did those drugs come from? How did they get to them? And we've had a number of those cases actually in Fort Pierce in federal court where we've had indictments of people for delivering those drugs and ultimately causing their death. So yes, if she had a fast away, certainly we would be investigating that as a, as a charge today. Uh, this guy, this guy right here is uh, Forrest Smith. Forrest, common spelling Smith. Mm -hmm. Yep. Corey, any questions? Okay. Thank you, guys. Other questions? Yeah. So, is doing this in a hospital an extra charge? Would be like if you know if this is somebody who's receiving at home care versus somebody in a hospital, would there be different charges? So, initially, just to get him in custody, uh, we charge him with delivery of drugs on Saturday, early Saturday. Uh, we are working with the state to enhance those charges to, uh, to hopefully get him charged with the possession. Um, there's some, some legislation out there about um, Good Samaritan laws that talk about, you know, somebody can't be charged, they can be charged. Those are all things we're working through the state with right now uh, because we want to make sure that we can hold this guy accountable for what he's done. But so far, we have initial charges to be able to hold him. And what's his relationship to the They have a relationship. There. It's, it's like boyfriend, girlfriend, ex, son-in-law. So they had some... They had a familial relationship. Now, obviously, she couldn't ask him to show up at the ICU or something. Did he just show she, up? No, she she absolutely was. She was still communicating. She was she actually was was communicating. Correct, guys? Yeah, she was communicating. She he was in and out visiting her throughout the day. He came back at two thirty in the morning, and that's when he gave her these drugs that caused her to uh, you know die. Code in the room. I don't have the exact uh, exact prescriptions of what they were, but it, he had a variety of different pills with him. Mm -hmm. uh, she's in her 30s? Oh. 67. Okay, 67. Does he have any priors? Any prior records? Anything? I don't have that information right now. Mm -hmm. 
the injection deal also? Or I don't have that information right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. now. They're communicating back and forth. Were there any text that maybe said come bring this? Our team is looking through all that right now. We're going through that part right now. Awesome. Thank you guys for coming up. And I know you got here late, yep, and he's just getting here. Right now, yep. Okay. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you.